Welcome to this week's Wednesday Silver Lining, and last week I overlooked quite a few stories. I was looking all over for stories. Okay, to be honest, I kind of overslept in my nap last week and kind of was caught off guard and I wanted to kind of rush things through. But as soon as I finished uploading, I found all these stories I forgot. And one of them really annoyed me because I can't believe I forgot it. I felt so dumb. Last Wednesday was the Swiss national holiday. How can I forget that? feel dumb. It's like, it's like, it's like forgetting Golden Week in Japan. Well, I don't really have much to say about it, but I think I've actually gotten a little better at understanding Swiss German. I've been trying to under, well, there's a lot of different dialects, but, and I can't understand the right thick ones, but I believe the Swiss way of saying that would be Schweizen at Feiertag, instead of like the regular German way of saying it, which would be Schweizen at Feiertag. Because Swiss German is a little weird. So I, I don't know where I'm going with that. But it's kind of related to my nerdiness about language, I guess. So take it for what it is, I guess. You know, I guess if we're already on the subject. Might as well go and rant about language learning a little bit. I think that some people are doing language wrong. And I think a lot of schools are pushing them to do it wrong. Because... Well, with most schools, and I've actually had this conversation with several people, so it's kind of relevant in my mind. I've been thinking about this a lot. A lot of schools tend to have kind of intimidating language learning courses. Like you either sign up for a year or you don't sign up at all. And I just don't think it really works that way because like for me, my motivation for learning a language doesn't really last that long. I kind of got to take a break and let it recharge. And that's why I learned two languages at once. Not simultaneously, but I switched back and forth. Like, first it was Japanese, and I learned Japanese for probably two or three years because I happened to have some Japanese friends, and so my motivation was higher. But then when I lost those friends, not, they didn't die, just like we stopped seeing each other and online. When I, when I stopped talking to my Japanese friends, then I didn't really have as much motivation to learn, and so I took a break. And then I started learning German. And because I had so many coworkers that were German, that kept my motivation up for two years. But, like, the average person learning a language in a country, in their native country, doesn't really have an opportunity to be motivated by, like, talking to friends or whatever to learn the language. And so, like, for me, if I'm in that position, like I'm kind of in right now, I'm just kind of stuck here learning by myself. And so my mot only motivation is my love for the language and... The possibilities it opens up, like movies, texts, Wik Wikipedia, things like that, then I only have maybe like eight months of motivation that I can store up for a particular language. Like, for instance, I just got done with maybe like eight or nine months of doing Japanese, and now I kind of just like last week I got kind of fed up. I'm like, you know what? It's kind of like getting a little harder to learn, it's just not fitting in my head right, so I'm just going to switch languages. Let that one sit on the shelf a little bit, go focus on German a little bit. And now I came back to German, and because like nine months ago I was at the same thing. We're like, man, I'm just kind of getting like a little fed up with German. It's not really making too much sense in some ways. But now I come back to German, and I'm kind of just like skipping through everything just to, keep me, just to make sure I'm updated. And it's going super fast, and a couple things that I didn't really get before, now I get. So it's almost like things like, like the information kind of settles in your mind a little bit, or maybe you just come back to it with a fresher perspective. But either way, I think that if anybody's interested in learning a language, they should know when to take breaks. A healthy amount of breaks between languages can, can, go, can go a long way in keeping it fun. Not too long that you forget anything, but you also don't want to just like act like it's like your job, because that just seems so boring, because languages are so amazing. Okay, maybe I should stop ranting as you get into the show. A little while ago, some archaeologists found a library, a 2,000 year old library in Cologne. Most of my friends call it Köln. So I think it's right, Cologne. It's a weird name for a town. Oh, but it might just be weird because I am used to the German term for it. And it's estimated that probably had about 2,000 scrolls. Wait, 20,000 scrolls. Wow. An extra zero there. Okay. So that's pretty cool. And I haven't looked too much up about this, so there might be some more, more information about it now, but. But yeah, it's kind of, like, that's kind of cool. Also, near Basel, Switzerland, they found an ancient Roman icebox, which all the news articles keep saying a refrigerator. Well, it's not a refrigerator. You put ice in it, so it's an icebox. But I guess, I guess 
icebox has kind of fallen out of favor. But yeah, it's an icebox. So it's a, it's an ancient Roman, like, cellar that you put ice in and you can, like, keep food there and it stays cold. And they've been doing experiments. Oh, also, I heard that, seems a little sensational, but they say that scientists just discovered a new shape. The scutoid, scutoid, scutoid. Not sure how to pronounce it, but I'm sure someone's probably imagined that shape before. Like, it's probably not that difficult, but interestingly enough, the web page, the, the Wikipedia site for it, was first made this year, so maybe it is a new shape. That's actually kind of cool. If it is, I'm going to go check number file because maybe number file has a video about that. That'd be kind of neat. Because, I mean, if a new shape's discovered, then of all places, number file has to talk about it. The astronauts were announced for the SpaceX and Boeing missions. I'm not too interested in them, sadly. But I've, I'll be more interested in them whenever they actually go to space. When you actually have footage of them going up. Because, again, I, I don't really subscribe to, the, like, the whole hero identity that is prescribed or ascribed, or whatever the term is, to astronauts. But once they're in space, and actually, and like, we can see videos of them in space, then it's kind of cool. So right now, that's just a little neat update that things are kind of going going along with the, the, I guess, private space flight? Yeah, I guess that's true. My English is just all messing up today, man. Here's a question for language learners and multilingual people. Do you sometimes totally forget, like just blank out on your first language? Sometimes I will just totally blank out on my on English and I'm left with like the very fragments of all the languages I know. But when that happens for like that 30 seconds where my mind just kind of like dies, I feel almost like I'm no longer reaching through my first language to get to the second language and I can more ac more easily access my second and third language. I still suck at it, but I suck a lot less than normal because it... Does that make sense? I'd like to hear what you guys think about that because it seems to happen every so often for me. Also, so the tariffs that Trump put in place, I believe he put them in place, maybe used other people, I'm not sure. It could have been one of those things where like Obama was already writing them up. I don't really know for sure. I don't pay too much attention. But either way, the new tariffs seem to have a positive effect on the steel industry. And one of the steel manufacturers, which is actually pretty close to my, my home, like only, like, compared to the world, it's only like maybe 100 miles or whatever. And I believe it's U.S. Steel. And because they've been getting so much more business, because, you know, foreign steel is more expensive now, then... They are, they've had to start up two dormant furnaces, of uh, two more blast furnaces, so so that's pretty cool. And, I mean, like, it just doesn't make sense to make something across the world and ship it here when we already have the machines to do it. So, I know it's a lot more complicated than that, but still, like, the simple fact is, like, well, we have the stuff to do it. So this doesn't really make sense to travel all the way around the world. Yeah. So I think... I think that's good news. At least I'm sticking to that because, I don't know, it seems like it helps local industry. So I'm happy with that. In SpaceX news, they launched their rocket B-1047, the serial number for the booster. Although, of course, it had a, a new second stage and it was launching oh, Mirafute or something like that. I'm not sure what the, the word was. It was a satellite. But it was the first relaunch of the new block, uh, Falcon 9 Block 5 and it seemed to go perfectly fine. And I thought it was a good launch. Oh yeah, also, they had a really, like, they're starting, to get, they're starting to get a little fancy with their camera work on the drone ships. So they actually had where the camera panned now. It was so cool. I mean, like, up until now, it's always just been a stationary camera, and so you don't always really see it coming. But as soon as it starts coming, it disrupts the signal so you don't see anything. So at least now you get to see it coming down, and then it cuts out. And then you see the rocket. So, that's a little better. And lastly... Tesla might be going private, which I think is just amazing, wonderful news, because Tesla has been fighting off the horrible leeches, which are short uh, stock sellers. Shorts. I, I keep hearing them as shorts. I don't fully understand shorts, but I also don't fully understand the stock market. So, from what I understand, shorts are the opposite of, well, I guess would be longs. They're opposite of regular 
investors and they they bet against companies and from what i understand tesla is one of the biggest shorted companies ever so there's a lot of people betting against it and a lot of that has been tainting the media to start attacking tesla and also attacking them in other ways because i mean if you have so many billion dollars bet against the company you're gonna go for some underhanded tactics or underhanded yeah underhanded tactics to make sure they fail and so tesla has found themselves in a very bad pos position that really puts a target on, the, on themselves so they decided you know what the biggest fuck you to all the short sellers would be to go private because i think if that happens they have to pay back all their money and that probably costs them a lot so please let me know i don't fully understand the stock market i think it's kind of like bullshit and tricks and magic just to, to trick people but you know kind of like i imagine the average like like the, the the stock market to be not much better than the whole enron architecture like the whole business structure but i obviously am ill-informed so please feel free to let me know where i'm wrong in the comment section below well that's pretty much it i think that's actually some pretty nice news and i hope you enjoyed this week's wednesday silver lining i hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching see ya